So this video, I want to show how we can take a Logix UDT, bring it into Optics, and then kind of assign it to a reusable graphic, like a faceplate or a widget, um, over and over again, or use the same faceplate and then assign multiple uh, UDTs to that faceplate so we can reuse the faceplate over and over again but then give it a different UDT each time. And we'll do that by creating an alias and then um, assigning the, um, the UDT type to that alias. So, um, so in the previous video, I kind of created the reusable object um, and just showed how we could build a reusable object and then use multiple instances of that object. And if I made a change to the base object, it would permeate to all the instances that were created. What I didn't show in that video was how do, would you go about assigning um, a tag, perhaps as an alias, to those objects. So first off, what we'll do is we'll come back to Studio 5000 and I've gone ahead and created a user-defined data type. And the example we'll use here is we're gonna make a pump kind of faceplate or pump widget, whatever you wanna call it. And we're going to basically have the same tag structure for each of the pumps that we, we have in our system. And then when we make our little pump faceplate in optics, these common tags will get sent in to, to each instance of that uh, faceplate. So to keep it simple, as an example, um, our pump UDT that I've created has three tags in it. Uh, one called label, which is a string, one called running, which is a bool or boolean, and one called speed, which is a real uh, data type. So since I've already created this ahead of time, I've created three UDT instances in the, in the Logix controller, basically. Pumps one, pump two, pump three. Each one has the label running and speed. And I've gone ahead and put some values in each of these just so that we could see those numbers come into um, into optics. Now I also have this running um, I got it connected to my Factory Talk Logics Echo emulated controller. I have, a, uh, I have a CPU called Echo CPU and it's tied to the loopback IP address 127.0.0.1. So when we go to optics now we'll be able to actually pull live data from a emulated running control logics CPU. So we're in our project. It's a, it's a blank proje project. Nothing's been uh, pre-configured here in optics. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we want to configure our communications to that logics controller. I've got two ways to do that. I can come to com drivers, right click, say new, and then I can choose RA for Rockwell Automation Ethernet IP driver. Or if I'm at my dashboard, I can choose the wizard to configure communications to a device. We'll say new station. Make sure we choose RA Ethernet IP station. We'll say next. The route will be the IP address, which is the IP address of my Logix Echo emulator. And for name, I can rename it. I'm going to go ahead and name it Echo CPU just to kind of shorten it and make it uh, something that is more recognizable. Say next. Now, I have the choices to import my tags. I can either do them offline by connecting to the ACD file, or I could choose online and actually connect to the real running controller and pull the, the, the tags out of the controller. So we are connected. It found the controller tags, the pump one UDT, pump two, and pump three. And if I were to expand these, we see that the, all the uh, sub tags are all there. I'm going to go ahead and choose select all and say next. So that has successfully been uh, imported. So I'm going to go ahead and choose exit. Now, once that is done, we now have a uh, our structure underneath the com drivers. There's our driver, there's our station, and here are our tags. 
So we have controller tags, pumps one, two, and three, and each one of these has label running in speed, also imported. But then I want to show that if we go to the types folder, we now have two folders here called data types and variable types. Data types, we see pump UDT. But if I go to variable types, I see pump UDT, and I see in parentheses the word type. And then if I expand that, I see label running in speed. So the UDT already came in as a type in optics, and we'll be able to use that uh, in our alias that we create to be uh, to use in our faceplate. So next is we're going to come up here to UI. And right now, all we have is a main window. And the main window is a blank screen. But what I want to do is I want to create an object that I can reuse, a reusable object. Um, so I'm going to create a folder under UI to kind of store that, that object. So I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, I'm going to right click and say new and folder. Now, in a previous video, I called this base objects. I could call it widgets. I can call it face plates. Um, call it whatever you want. Um, since I've been using the term face plates, and that's consistent with some other Rockwell HMI um, tools, I'll, I'll go ahead and use the word face plates here. It doesn't really matter what we call this folder. So now under face plates, I'm going to say I'm going to right click and say new and I'm going to say containers and I'm going to say panel and it's called panel one. I'm going to go ahead and rename this to um, pump uh, faceplate. Could probably come with something shorter than that, but we'll just use that. Now I'm going to double click on this because now this opens up the the pump faceplate itself. So it defaults to 300 by 300 uh, height and width. I can stretch this and make it a little skinnier or whatever. We're gonna, uh, maybe I'll go with about, uh, well, we'll stick with this size, I think. So if we recall, we have three things we wanna show on our, on our um, pump faceplate, essentially. One is the label, one is the, if it's running, and one is the speed. So right click on my uh, pump faceplate type here and we'll say new base controls and a label. And we'll kind of put that here at the top. Right click new base controls. Uh, I'll use an LED to indicate if it's running or not. And one more will be right click new base controls and let's use a circular gauge this time. And at the moment, um, I can rearrange all this however I want. Um, and just kind of get it, maybe put the LED. Let me go ahead and put this to the back so I can do that. All right, so what we'll do now is we have our click on the pump faceplate kind of the top part here itself. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit this plus symbol here. So this is the properties of the, uh, of the whole faceplate itself or the object. And I'm gonna say new alias. So it, it creates an alias here called alias one. Now, I'm going to rename this to uh, to pump alias. Node ID we'll leave alone, and the kind we will assign to the com drivers echo CPU types variable types pump UDT type. So now I can come to each of these actual elements that I put inside of the um, inside of the faceplate. And first is the label. 
So the label, right now the text is saying label one. We're going to go ahead and assign this text to label. Now, what I, uh, what I didn't explain is when I said kind, that kind of acted as a filter. So, so when I did this, um, when I, when I put it to the pump UDT, uh, type it now, it's it kind of filters down our aliases and it sees pump UDT. And then here are the three variables or for three tags that are in that UDT. So I'm going to assign it to label for my, uh, gauge, I'm going to come to value and I'm going to go to aliases, pump alias, I'm going to assign it to speed. And for my LED or my uh, on off indicator, I'm going to um, come here to active and come to alias and choose running. Okay, so I created an alias and now I've created and I've now linked the the uh, the three objects that I put on this faceplate to the alias uh, tags, the, the structure. So now I got to do is um, we come back to our main window and now I can right click and say new. And now I have a folder here called faceplates or, or a menu item called faceplates and I can say pump faceplate. So there's uh, my first faceplate. I can right click, say new faceplate. And there is a second faceplate. And I'm going to do one more. Faceplates, pump faceplate. So now I've got my pumps one, two, and three. And it looks like I probably should have made my uh, face plates a little skinnier, but we can stretch the window out that way. So all we got to do next is we have pumps one, two, and three. So now we come here to pump alias. So I'm at the properties of this pump face plate one. Come to pump alias. Set the alias. And this time... I'm going to set it to the com driver tags, controller tags, and just going to choose the pump one that the uh, kind of the root level there. I'm going to come to pump faceplate two. I'm going to do the same thing, come down to com drivers, tags, controller tags pump two and then for this one pump three of course we come down and do the same thing uh, com drivers tags pump three and that's it i'm gonna go ahead and save this that's all i gotta do i'm gonna go ahead and start the emulator And the emulator opens in the other window. So here we are, face plates one, two, and three. So if we recall, if we come back to our Studio 5000 application, we'll see that um, I had pump one label as pump 101-A, and pump two was 201-B, and pump three was 301-C. And then, um, Pump one was off and had zero speed. Pump uh, 201 was like 41.3 and, and on, and pump three was on and about 72.4. Now, if I go ahead and change this value here on the screen, we see the number actually changed back here in the controller. So it's same thing with pump two. If I were to actually type a value in here, like 25, you can see now that it, it updated on the faceplate as well. So, so I could actually write from here down to the controller, or I, of course, can read from the controller dynamically. So that's all that we had to do. We created, uh, you know, we, we created UDTs. We brought those into optics. 
then I created a faceplate, and then I created an alias linking back to that UDT type, and then I was quickly able to, um, to reuse this object and just assign it to, to, the, uh, to the right UDT for the, each pump. Now, this is what is kind of called uh, resolving at design time, meaning that everything I've done, as you just saw, I configured in optics while designing. And then once we go into the run mode, you know, all that configuration um, gets used in the runtime. So pretty much was pre-planned and pre-configured. That's what we mean by resolving at design time. So the, the, the other method we can do here is what we'll call resolving at runtime, where I will be able to use the index or an index to choose which set of pump data would I want to bring into the faceplate each time. So, so that'll be um, resolving at runtime, so to speak, and that'll be done with the index. So we'll show that in, a, in another video.